that is a blatant pathological obsession that you can see with left-wing Westerners who are suffering from identity politics to go into every single hobby and try to change it. Not to improve it or anything like that, but to just to insert their ideology into the hobby even though the fans may like it or not. And they do this in a very smug, condescending way that is absolutely disgusting. Usually they will look at a hobby, they will say that because the hobby doesn't have X, Y, and Z, then clearly people who play the hobby are racist, uh, sexist, homophobic, whatever. And the solution is to change it and put them in charge or give money to their Patreon. Uh, it's pretty much what we're seeing here with the Template Institute. The Template Institute is a YouTube channel that does lore videos. And I guess in order to show how backward thinking and Westerners they are, they latch on to some controversy that still hasn't died over the internet, and that is like Warhammer doesn't have female space marines. Right now, it's interesting because in Warhammer you also don't have female orcs, but for some reason they're not trying to push into that. In Warhammer you also don't have male Adepta Sororitas, and it's not to improve the game. Like, this is not coming from within the community. It's not grassroots. I mean, before you had all of this woke madness, which, by the way, started with Occupy Wall Street, when the Americans realized that we can divide people based on race and gender, and they won't notice class. And if we keep that, and we insert it into every single hobby, people will leave the bankers alone, and they're going to focus on trivial shit. Right? But before that, like, literally, no one was complaining that there are no female space marines. And, of course, you know, you have the Templar Institute coming here that the argument there can't be female space marines, it violates established lord or canon, or whatever, is not only asinine, but reflects a total misunderstanding of the Warhammer 40k universe. Okay, I asked ChatGPT in order to tell me if this is true or not, right? Maybe I'm being gaslighted here, maybe I just don't happen to know the lord. It turns out that, yes, uh, all space marines are male, for lore reasons. Right? Now we're going to get into why that's important a little bit later on, but uh, as you can imagine, this post um, sparked a little bit of controversy. Uh, feel free to argue with me so I can destroy you and incorporate your arguments into a video. Well, it seems that the Archcast responded. The only thing that I need to dismiss your arguments out of hand is that you are a tourist and at best a anti-fan at worst. Don't let the gate hit you on the way out of 40k. Now, this led to the Template Institute to ban the Archcast and then shout like an angry man at the internet from behind the block wall, saying that sometimes I feel like maybe we just don't have it in us to succeed at your level. It's been over five years that we have yet to be publicly blacklisted by anyone over racist slurs. Now, first of all, I would like to point out that Games Workshop left a statement saying that their game is for everyone. Now, according to the definition of everyone, I understand it's even people that use racist slurs. But in this case, Arch Warhammer didn't even use racist slurs. This is just a far-left conspiracy theory. What actually happened is that Arch, being a game reviewer, is suffering the same problem that other game reviewers suffer from the platform. If you want to be honest and give a decent review and call a bad game a bad game, you're going to upset a lot of corporations. And they're not going to give you any more early access they're not going to try to work with you in order for you to review their games. So if you want to have a lot of subscribers on YouTube, then you need to praise every single game that you're getting. You need to give it a standing ovation. And then companies keep working with you. So this is why Arch is on a blacklist. It's because if you actually look at this Warhammer series, he calls out the bugs. He is upset when a video game isn't up to standard. And this upsets a lot of corporations. It's not just him. It's almost every single other YouTuber that I know. But what I do like is the reply that Arch gave. The Template Institute says nothing of substance or value that would challenge a company enough to care you even exist. My name is infamous, your name is dirt. I really love that. And you can see by the, the number of likes, retweets, and <laughs> views, uh, it didn't really go the way that the Template Institute expected it to go. But uh, what's more interesting is that I actually used an AI in order to ask why is lore important? Why do people care so much when the lore is changed? And I think like the number three is the best one. Lore can also be an integral part of a fan base identity and changing it can be viewed as a betrayal of that identity. In other words, many corporations are spending millions of dollars in marketing 
in order to try to make their product your identity. And you will see this a lot of times on the internet when people used to argue between PlayStation and Xbox, or people used to argue between iPhone and anything else. Because it was part of their identity to be the type of person that purchases the iPhone before everyone. And this is good for business. But for some reason, companies have moved away from trying to make their product an identity and are now pushing identity politics. So in other words, oh, our company champions, blah, 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 blah. If you champion blah, 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 then you're a good person. I don't know if this is as good as business as trying to make your brand the identity of the customer. But suffice to say that when it comes to Warhammer, there are a lot of core fans that purchase a lot from these companies that identify themselves with the brand. So if you're just going to change the brand for the sake of changing it, yes, you may alienate these people. And then it also serves as the foundation for a story world and changing it can fundamentally alter the experience for fans. Lore often reflects the cultural and societal values of the time in which it was created. And changing it can be seen as an attempt to impose moral values on the past. Changing elements of lore for the sake of wokeness can be seen as pandering or virtue signaling rather than a genuine attempt to improve the story. Altering the lore can also affect the continuity of the story. It can create inconsistencies and confusion among fans and affect the fans' understanding of the story. And lore is also a way of creating a sense of immersion in the story. Changing it can make it difficult for fans to suspend their disbelief and fully engage with the story. Yes, I, I love this argument. It's like, oh, well, you know, Game of Thrones has dragons in it. It's got dragons in it. Like, well, why can't it have a BMW with an onboard computer with GPS? And we can have that at the Battle of the Bastards. Because if it has dragons in it, like, it can have anything, right? So, I love the fact that the AI is now able to replace me. And uh, by the way, the question is like, will the AI pass the turning test? Uh, I think it can't because I can definitely tell when I'm talking to an AI versus when I'm talking with the person. If the person is making dumb statements, it's probably a human being. If it actually makes coherent arguments and, and it has a point, it's probably an AI. At least when you're navigating on Twitter. But of course, you know, this was never about like making the game more inclusive or anything like that. It never is. It's about grifting. And here you have the example. Thus concludes our participation into the great female space marine Twitter war. Did you, you pushed on a couple of controversial statements, blocked anyone that disagreed with you, and then started barking at the internet from behind the block wall. What, what war? What, what are you talking about? How many people were even on your side? Like, no one cares about it. In five days, everyone is going to even... Oh, Jesus, five days. In two days, everyone is even going to forget that this ever happened, Right? But like, here it is, if you'd like to really stick it to those leftist woke moralists at the Templin Institute, why not force them to participate in capitalism by pledging to their Patreon? That will learn them. Yes. The Grift. You gotta ask yourself, does the Templin Institute really want to change the game for the better? Or would they not want a tweet from Game Workshop going like, yes, Templin Institute. Oh, you are such excellent human beings. Oh, the perfect client. Oh. Oh, here's some, here's some early access from us. Oh, this is what they want, right? Like the big corporation to notice them and, and more people to give money to their Patreon. It's not about women. It's not about, you know, like ending racism in the United States. No, it's just like, how can I get the corporation to like me? It's kind of like the teacher pet, you know, when, when like the teacher is, is very stern and it gives bad grades and you're like, how can I get this teacher to like me? Oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to enforce what the teacher wants. It's like, teacher, little Billy didn't do his homework. Oh. Uh, anyway, right. Let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.